Hello and welcome to the next podcast of Horror of Doctor Who. What you just heard was the scream of Mel Bush, played by Bonnie Langford, companion of Sylvester McCoy and Colin Baker. Probably the best scream ever in the history of Doctor Who. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I am the Geek in Size 71, otherwise known as the Classic Doctor Who Guy on Twitter. In this episode, it will be in two parts, actually. So, part one, Horror of Doctor Who, will be from 1963 to 1979. And the next podcast will be the 80s Horror of Doctor Who. I tried to cram it all, cram it all in once, but there was just too much to talk about. Doctor Who always excelled at cliffhangers that would uh, shock and sometimes scare. What it also excelled at was being creepy and scary when it wasn't meant to be. From the very first episode right up to the final broadcast of Survival, there was always something that would always either scare you or creep you out. In this podcast, I am going to go through scenes that I particularly thought were scary. At the end of An Earthly Child, we see a silhouette of a body approaching the TARDIS and a hand reaches out and touches the rock. That in itself was a scary scene because it's the first time you actually see somebody outside the TARDIS. If that blood-curdling scream from Barbara did not scare the pants off you in the Daleks, nothing will. When all you see is that plunger coming towards and you don't actually see a body, that's definitely frightening. The next episode that I think was quite scary was the Sensorites. The scene when you Sensorite comes up from outside the window and Ian is looking at it. When I saw that for the first time, I did not sleep that night. I kept looking at my bedroom window thinking that there's going to be a Sensorite coming towards me. Truly terrifying. The next morning, my mom's looking at me, wondering what's going on, and I just looked at her and said, It's a long story. This is one of those, I'm not sure if they meant for it to be scary, but it was rather scary, especially when you were a little kid, was the Ark. The first time you got to see a monoid, with just the one eye, now that was terrifying. Another terrifying creature was, and I'm sure I'm probably going to murder this name, the Quaquillion. From the rescue. A little fun fact, the Coquillion was actually, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Made, um, it was, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It was influenced by a close-up of a face of a fly. Now, you, if you really look closely, you can actually see that influence. And um, when you first see it on screen, and even after when it terrifies the, um, when it terrifies the, um, what's her name, Vicky, it's still quite scary. Another episode that I don't think was meant to be scary was the Keys of Marinus. Um, I don't find the episode itself um, scary, but the camera work really left it open like it messes with your mind. It was very well done, and um, hands off to the director for uh, pulling that off. Watching that episode was like you've taken some kind of an hallucinative drug, and as some of the characters are coming towards you, you're like, whoa, dude, what's going on? That's some far-out stuff. Good evening. I am Count Dracula. The next one is probably one of my all-time favorite William Hartnell episodes, Journey into Terror. The scene where um, it seems they've landed into a haunted house and they meet Dracula and Frankenstein. Um, Brilliantly played by everybody. Even the doctor gets scared at one time when he sees Frankenstein rise off the table. Hilarious, funny. I tell you, I haven't laughed so hard in an earlier William Hartnell episode as much as I did in this one. And in the end, it turns out 
all they were were in a house of horrors that you got in for 10 cents. Can you imagine getting into a place like that for 10 cents nowadays? I would be going there every day if I could. The next one is for all you clown lovers, the Celestial Toy Maker, and all those pesky clowns that you see. Yeah, I don't need to get into that. And, and I don't need to get into too much about that. See, I'm already scared and so much that I can't even talk. Clowns, clowns are evil. We are called Cybermen. The Emotionalist Cybermen. First time you see them is in the 10th planet, Willem Hartnell's final episode, and truly, truly terrifying. And those faces look at you with those black eyes and those mouths that open in those sock faces in that monotone voice. Yes, how can you not be scared from that? Moving on now to Patrick Troughton's Doctor. Now, I don't remember too many episodes being really scary for Patrick Troughton. Um, this is one of the episodes that were, is a lost episode, um, but when I got the Lost in Time box set, uh, this was on it and I got to see the scene for the first time, and when uh, Mr. Oak and Mr. Quill arrive and they attack Mrs. Harris, it's truly terrifying, especially when their mouths open slowly and they start emitting that gas, that sent chills down my spine. You belong to us. You shall be like us. The one thing that the 60s did really well was make the Cybermen scary. In the scene in Tomb of the Cybermen where they were coming out of the tombs in slow motion with the scary eerie music was no different. Definitely terrifying stuff. The next decade of Doctor Who saw a new Doctor in colored episodes. The uh, Spearhead from Space, the first episode of John Pertwee's tenure as Doctor Who, was terrifying um, as it dealt with uh, plastics coming to life. The shot, the shot where the mannequins breaking out of the glasses and killing their glass. The shot of the mannequins breaking out of the shop glass casings where they were displayed and going around and killing people was very terrifying. And there's one scene in particular where one of the mannequin comes out of the forest and um, looks into a broken glass um, jeep window that had blood on it after one of the human soldiers gets killed. That was terrifying. And um, yeah, I couldn't sleep that night after that scene. Your first look at a Silurian in the Silurians definitely made you take notice. Also made me a little more scared of the water as well. The scene of the ambassador coming up behind the doctor with his hand stretched out and that eerie music was definitely a little scary. And then the idea of not being able to see who or what was behind those um, masks definitely uh, was a little bit on the creepy side. There was definitely a couple shock factors in Terror of the Autons. One was this creepy doll that um, came to life and attacked people and when that happened I tell you I went running out of the room when I was a kid watching this. It, it would, yeah, I really don't have the words to say except for this was truly terrifying. And then there was another scene where a black plastic chair decided to engulf somebody and suffocate them to death. Yeah, you definitely took notice of plastics after that episode. The eye thingy in Claws of Axos was terrifying in itself, especially when it was like moving around and looking at things. And um, the Axos' true form was definitely scary as well great big blobby things with tentacles that came out of their bodies. Yep, no thanks. My personal favorite episode of John Pertwee's tenure as Doctor Who was the Daemons. And the first time you get to see Bach when it turns his head slowly, that would send a sane man insane. I ran into that room faster than you can shake your leg. The scene in Carnival of Monsters when the Drashigs break out into their casings and start hunting Joe and the Doctor out in that marshy land. The sound 
it was quite scary, especially when you uh, you couldn't see where they were, but you, the doctor and Joe knew that they were being hunted. It definitely made your jaw drop. The giant maggots and the green death, to this day, I make sure I freeze my waist. I don't get any maggots in my house. It was bad enough in Time Monster when you see Lynx, the Santarn, for the first time when he removes his mask. But when he sticks his tongue out, now that was really terrifying. Playing into one's phobias, we move on to my next phobia, in one that I don't plan on sticking around to talk about too much. Planet of the Spiders. Not only are spiders creepy, spiders are ugly, spiders are nasty, eight legs, all those eyes, when they look at you, when they crawl around you, they're just nasty, they're gross, and they shouldn't be on this planet. People say, yes, they get rid of bugs, but do they have to be so icky? Anyways, that's all I'm going to say about this, and when he goes and sees the queen spider and she's a giant, ugly thing, I was just about ready to pee my pants. That's all I'm going to say about that. Moving on. When we talk about um, cliffhangers and shock value, none of them was more shocking when you see the Wyrn for the first time in the Ark in Space when it jumps out and scares the ever-living dickens right out of you. I wish I could show clips without um, the threat of copyright because I'm, I'm sure these pictures are probably going to be close enough as it is. But I would have shown the scene in which the Zygon is revealed for the first time when it quickly goes after Sarah Jane Smith when she's on the telephone. You want to talk about cliffhangers and shock value? That one is the best one out of them all. The sound, that little squeal when she yells, which is very rare for Sarah Jane. You know it's scary when she yells. Now that is scary. And that is how it's done at the end of part one, The Terror of the Zygons. The first of many Hammer Horror-esque gothic stories from the Tom Baker series sees the mummies from Pyramid of Mars. Those things were terrifying. The story itself was terrifying. I love the gothic years of Tom Baker. Those had be some of the most terrifying stories of all of Doctor Who. Hats off to Philip Hinchcliffe, who uh, brought in some of the really darker, more gothic stories of Tom Baker's tenure in Doctor Who. Really brilliant stuff. Another one of those times where I wish I could show a clip of the scene is at the end of part two of the Android Invasion, where Sarah Jane falls to the ground and her face falls off to reveal the android face. That was terrifying definitely made your hair stand up. Another one of those hammer horror-esque stories was The Brain of Morbius. There was quite a few shock factors in that one. Namely this scene where Sarah Jane, temporarily blinded, is walking towards a talking brain. Yes, that was gross. The Seeds of Doom, Doctor Who's version of The Thing was truly terrifying, especially when the guy was being taken over by the alien race being as he was turning into a crinoid. The Masks of Mandragoria, hey, I got the name right. It took me a long time to practice that one. Had a few really scary moments, especially when it dealt with a lot of like ghosts and stuff like that. Brilliant stuff. One of my uh, one of my favorites of Tom Baker, and you can also say that this one was done in the Hammer esque storylines as well. If I just said the name alone, Talons of Wing Chiang, everyone would automatically go to the rat scene in the sewers. Truly terrifying, and when Leela, another non big screamer, gets attacked in screams when the rat was attacking her. Totally disgusting, and especially if you're not a rat fan. And I've seen some doozies in my time. Gentlemen, I have news for you. The sleigh house is under attack, and by morning, we might all be dead. Anyone interested? The Horror of Fang Rock. 
perfect example of creepy, dark Doctor Who. Can't get any better than this. Maybe so, but in my mind, you can't get any better than this. My all-time favorite Tom Baker episode, he's sitting in the lighthouse, an alien creature killing off all the occupants, and in the end, only two people walk out alive. The Doctor and Leela. Perfect Doctor Who, scary, dark, and creepy. And finally, we come to The Stones of Blood. Another Hammer-esque story based around a set of rocks that come to life and kill people. Brilliantly acted, well-written, very creepy story, and um, another one of my all-time favorite Tom Baker episodes that also has the lovely Mary Tam. Well, this concludes part one of the horror of Doctor Who. Many, many classic horror stories that uh, will live in your memories as some of the best dark Doctor Who. If you have some favorites, just let me know. I would like to hear. I would like to hear some stories that you have of some creepy episodes. Leave comments below and uh, let me know what you think. If you happen to like this podcast, I know it's not perfect, but I don't like to edit. I don't have time for that. Sometimes I'll edit. Actually, yeah, I'm not going to kid you. I do edit some of it. But it's me, with just my microphone, talking about the show that I love. Classic Doctor Who. I edit out some of the swearing, because when I make mistakes, it's quite comical. And I will be doing a blooper reel at the end of part two. I'm guaranteed you'll probably laugh at some of the stupid mistakes. And even my dog makes an appearance at the end as well. Because, you know, it was feeding time and I was neglecting her. And she let me, she let me know. Anyways, this concludes part one. And part two will be along shortly. Thank you and have a good night.